Deep sea creatures are fascinating, diverse, and a little unsettling. They are so alien and unreal that humans have struggled to comprehend them for centuries. We thought it was time to look at some of the most bizarre animals that we have discovered in our never-ending quest for discovery of all sizes, shapes, and colors. We have picked out some of the most unusual creatures that have been discovered out in the deep sea. These incredible animals would shock you if you saw them swimming amongst all of our routine fish. So let's go on and discover how much more there is under our ocean. Here are 20 bizarre deep sea creatures ever discovered. Number 20. Fireworks Jellyfish Researchers on the exploration vessel, EV, Nautilus, recently took some rare pictures of a jellyfish that, when lit up, looks like fireworks going off. At a depth of 4,000 feet, 1,200 meters, the Halitrefes massi jelly was seen in the Revillagigedo archipelago, off the coast of Baja California, Mexico. When something interesting floats by while our team is collecting samples, we quickly switch gears to look at it and write about it. The researchers write, Radial canals that move food through the jelly's bell make a starburst pattern that reflects the lights of ROV Hercules with bright splashes of yellow and pink. This jelly's beauty drifts off in the dark without our lights, unseen. In other words, this jellyfish's beauty is usually hidden because it swims around in the deep ocean in total darkness. We can only see how beautiful it is because lights light it up and cameras are underwater. The people on the exploration vessel Nautilus have found another amazing sight during their many underwater trips, which is a relief. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. This time for the strange topic hashtag. The ocean is way deeper than you think. We've all noticed that the sea looks deep. We can see fish swimming in big ships that sink to the bottom. Although a bit of a bumpy ride, however, as with many things only deep sea swimmers can discover when they go deep into the sea. This scary fish with bold teeth and a big body. The fish has an irregular shaped mouth making it scarier. This is an uncommon fish, but the deep swimmer was brave enough to capture the creature on camera and share the moment with the world. It's apparent that it is a serpentine creature with swimmers on both sides of its body capable of moving independently and even upside down in the water. It's not clear why the fish was found swimming in such deep water and not seen often. Share your comments with the hashtag strange topic and we'll pin the ones that can best explain what is going on in this picture. Number 19. Barrel Eye Fish Scientists have just taken a picture of a fish that lives thousands of feet below the surface of Monterey Bay, off the coast of California. The fish has a big, clear head, and you can see its bright green eyes through its forehead. The barrel eye fish, also called Macropena microstoma, is a rare and unusual species. Even though the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute have sent more than 5,600 remotely operated vehicles ROVs, into the fish's habitat, they have only seen the species nine times. Knowles kept his attention on the ROV camera while ROV pilot Newt Burke kept the underwater robot pointed at the barrel eye. The control room was full of excited chatter. Noel said, We all knew it was a once in a lifetime chance to see this hard to find species. Barrel eye fish can be found in the Bering Sea, Japan, and Baja, California. The fish live in the twilight zone of the ocean, which is between 200 and 1,000 meters deep. MBARI MBARI says that barrel eyes live about 2,000 to 2,600 feet, 600 to 800 meters, below the ocean's surface, which is close to the depth at which the water becomes completely clear. Number 18. Gulper Eel The gulper eel is also called the pelican eel or the umbrella mouth. It is found in the warmer waters of the tropics, mostly around Australia, and is also known as the pelican eel or the pelican eel. It has a pretty long body, eyes that aren't too big, and a pink and red tail. A lot of the gulper eel's food comes from crustaceans. Gulper eels are not in danger of going extinct right now. They live in tropical oceans and seas where deep and warm water. There is no clear sign that the gulper eel, Europharynx pelicanoides, is an endangered species since many of them live in the places where they live. Since these animals live in warm, deep sea water, they can adapt well to the warming of water caused by global warming. But it's hard to say what the bad effects of more climate change could be if it's 
allowed to happen worldwide without being stopped. But for now, the gulper eel seems to be doing well in a world warming up as a whole. Number 17. Big Fin Squid Big fin squids are a group of cephalopods that are rarely seen and unique. They belong to the Magnapinna genus and the Magnapinidae family. Even though we only know about the family from larvae, pre-larvae, and young specimens, some experts think adults also have been seen. Numerous videos have been taken of animals called long arm squids that seem to have the same shape. Since none of the specimens that look like adults have ever been caught or studied, it is still unknown if they are all from the same genus or only distantly related. Both the arms and tentacles of a squid are very long. They are thought to be between 4 and 8 meters, 13 and 26 feet long. These parts are held at right angles to the body, making elbows. We still don't know how the squid eats. It was labeled a Mastigo toithid, first as Chirotuthopsis talismani, and then as Mastigo toithis talismani. In 1956, a squid called Magnapinna spc was caught in the South Atlantic. The specimen was called Octopod Tuthopsis. It was shown in Alistair Hardy's 1956 book, The Open Sea. Two young adults and paralarvae were used to describe the genus, but none had the characteristic long tips on their arms yet. But they all had big fins, so they were called Magna Pinna, which means big fin. Number 16. The Phantom Jelly the giant phantom jelly, or Stygiomedusa gigantea, is a type of jellyfish in the genus Stygiomedusa, with only one species. This belongs to the family Olmaridae. It is a jellyfish that has only been seen about 110 times in the last 110 years, but it is thought to be found worldwide except in the Arctic Ocean. The underwater vehicles at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute have only seen the jelly 27 times in 27 years. The S. gigantea has a bell that looks like an umbrella and can grow up to 1 meter long, 3.3 feet. The jellyfish can stretch its bell four to five times its size, probably to swallow its prey. This is made possible by its soft tissue. Brown looked at an S. gigantea he had collected and found that their jelly looks red-orange only when there's light. But because they live in the deep ocean, the light that we can see doesn't reach them far enough. So depending on how deep the water is, the giant jellyfish may seem invisible or have a faint orange glow. Number 15. Vampire Squid the vampire squid sea creature is a small cephalopod that lives in the deepest parts of temperate and tropical oceans. The vampire squid can live in parts of the ocean with no oxygen because it has organs that glow and a unique way of using oxygen. It has two long retractile filaments between the first two pairs of arms on its dorsal side. This makes it different from octopuses and squids and puts it in its order. Vampyromorphida, even though its closest relatives are octopuses, it's the only member of its order that is still alive. The first specimens were found during the Valdivia expedition. German toothologist Carl Schoon called them an octopus in 1903, but they were later put in a new order with several extinct taxa. During the Valdivia expedition from 1898 to 1899 and was led by Carl Schoon, the vampire squid was found. The vampire squid is covered almost completely in organs that make light. These organs are called photophores, and they can make blinding flashes of light that last from a few hundredths of a second to several minutes. Photophores can also be changed regarding how bright they are and how big they are. The photophores look like small white discs and are bigger and more complicated at the tips of the arms and the base of the two fins. Number 14. Glass Octopus the Trella Donella Riccardi is a transparent, gelatinous, and almost colorless mesopelagic to bathypelagic octopod that lives in subtropical and tropical seas worldwide. An adult's mantle can be up to 11 centimeters, 4.3 inches long, and the whole creature can be up to 45 centimeters, 18 inches long. The top three pairs of arms are about the same length. When they are young, they are about as long as the mantle. They are two to three times as long as the mantle when they are adults. The fourth pair on the ventral side is a bit shorter. Suckers are small, spread out, and all in one line. 
In males, the left arm 3 is hectocotylized and has a spherical vesicle near the tip. However, this part of the arm cannot be taken off. The large ampulla and the long accessory gland stand out among the male's internal reproductive organs. It is thought that the eye's unusual shape is an adaptation that helps the animal hide by making the eye look smaller when seen from below. The radula is heterodont, also called heteroglossia, because the middle, or rachidian, tooth in each set has more than one cusp, while the side teeth only have one. As they get older, their diet will likely change so they will move from deeper levels between 310 and 440 meters, but they can go as far as 1000 meters to the subsurface between 110 and 300 meters. Number 13. Hagfish Hagfish are marine fish that look like eels and make slime. They belong to the class Myxini, also called Hyperrotretti. In the order of myxiniforms, occasionally called slime eels, they are the only known animals to have a skull but not a spinal column, though hagfish do have very basic vertebrae. Like lampreys, hagfish don't have jaws. They belong to the same group as vertebrates with jaws, and living hagfish are still the same as hagfish that lived about 300 million years ago. There had been a lot of disagreement about how to classify hagfish. There had been a question of a lot of disagreement about how to classify hagfish. The question was whether the hagfish was a deformed type of vertebrate fish that had lost its vertebrae through evolution, the original theory, and was most similar to lampreys, or if hagfish were a stage before the evolution of the vertebral column, the other theory, like lancelets. New DNA evidence has shown that the original plan was right. Hagfish and lampreys were originally put in the same group as cyclostomes, or historically, agnatha, which is the oldest living class of vertebrates, the now ubiquitous job vertebrates. The alternative theory said that jawed vertebrates are more closely related to lampreys than to hagfish. This means that vertebrates include lampreys but not hagfish, and the category craniata was created to group vertebrates near hagfish. Number 12. The Red-Lipped Batfish the red-lipped batfish is a strange animal that only lives in the Galapagos. It walks instead of swimming and looks like it's ready for a night out. A strange fish is a red-lipped batfish. The red-lipped batfish is very similar to other batfish, but it's only found in the Galapagos Islands. They can be found in the Pacific Ocean around Galapagos at depths of 3 to 76 meters or along the edges of reefs up to 120 meters deep. The red-lipped batfish has a light brown and grayish back and its stomach is white. On the top, there is usually a stripe of brown dots that goes from the head all the way down to the tail. The stripe is dark brown. The red-lipped batfish has brown spots on its nose and horn. As its name suggests, the batfish has bright, almost fluorescent red lips that look like it just ate something bloody or is wearing very bright lipstick. The batfish can swim along the bottom of the ocean to find food, but its fins are better suited to act like fake legs. The bird uses these legs to walk and perch on while it looks around. The structure on its head is called elysium, which is thought to be used to lure prey. The species eat both fish and insects, but mostly small fish and crustaceans like shrimp and mollusks. Number 11. The Dotted Nudibranch Nudibranches are marine gastropod mollusks with soft bodies. They are known for their many different shapes and colors. It's easy to see why so many scuba divers fall in love with these animals. About 3,000 species of nudibranches are recognized. The dotted nudibranch is a mollusk that doesn't have a shell. The tiny white hairs on the animal's skin cover its whole body, giving it a fuzzy look. The black circles are made up of black bristles that stick up. The young ones have markings that look like black spots. The head has two horns with black tips. On the back are feather-like gills with black edges. It can get as long as five centimeters. The animal lays its eggs in a spiral shape made of gelatin. This is called an egg ribbon, and it has a lot of tiny eggs on it. During the breeding season, it might lay more than one egg ribbon. When you see blue sponges, look around carefully. This is what the dotted nudibranch eats most of the time, so it's often near it. This also goes for the egg ribbons they make. The nudie seems to be a very picky eater since it only seems to eat one kind of blue sponge. The sponge helps it keeps its toxicity, which is a chemical defense that makes it taste bad to predators and might even make them sick if they eat it. Number 10. Sea Spider 
Sea spiders are marine arthropods that belong to the order Pantopoda, which means all feet. They are also in the class Pycnogonida, so they are also called Pycnogonids. Four, named after Pycnogonum, they can be found in different oceans all over the world, so they are cosmopolitan. There are more than 1300 species, and the length of their legs ranges from 1 millimeter to more than 70 centimeters. Most of them live in shallow water on the smaller end of this range. However, they can get quite big in the Antarctic and deep waters. Even though sea spiders are not real spiders or even arachnids, their traditional classification as chelicerids puts them closer to real spiders than to other well-known arthropod groups like insects or crustaceans. This isn't clear though, because genetic evidence suggests that they may be related to all other living arthropods. Sea spiders have no lungs. Their exoskeleton provides oxygen instead. They may also be blind in the deep sea. Because they devour soft organisms like anemones, bryozoans, hydroids, worms, and corals, most sea spiders are carnivores. Some are also known to dine on algae. To obtain fluids from their prey, they employ a proboscis, a tube-like mouth that is often longer and larger than their bodies. Sea spiders are poorly studied despite their widespread distribution and depth in the ocean. There's still so much unknown about these fascinating aquatic arthropods. Number 9. Giant Isopod Giant isopods are any of the nearly 20 species of large isopods in the genus Bathonomus. Isopods are crustaceans that are only distantly related to shrimp and crabs, which are decapods. They live in the cold, deep waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Bathonomus giganteus, the species on which the genera type is based, is often thought to be the largest isopod in the world. However, other less well-known species of Bathonomus may reach a similar size. The giant isopods are known for how much they look like the much smaller common woodlouse, also called a pill bug. Most commercial fisheries don't care much about giant isopods, but they are known for attacking and killing fish caught in trawls. Sometimes you can see fish caught in the Americas and Japan in public aquariums. Giant isopods are one of the numerous deep sea gigantism since they are much bigger than the typical isopods, which are only up to 5 centimeters long. Their shape is similar to that of the woodlouse, which lives on land. Their bodies are compressed from the back to the front, and they are protected by a hard, calcareous shell made of overlapping segments. Number 8. Sea Pens Sea pens are colonies of corals. Sea pens are a colony of many polyps, just like their relatives, individual animals. What makes them different from other colonial corals is that each polyp has a specific job to do. One of their polyps grows into a straight stalk that holds the rest of the colony down to the bottom of the ocean. Because of this, many sea pens look like big feathers or old-fashioned quill pens. This is how they got their name. Sea pens come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors, but each colony and species have a central stem called the rachis that holds the rest of the colony together and keeps it from floating away. The rachis starts out as a special kind of polyp that grows into a straight stalk. Most sea pens have a calcium carbonate skeleton that runs the animal's length. The other polyps grow out from the central rachis. They are used to feed, get water, and make more polyps. Even though they are called sea pens, not all look like old quill pens. Some species don't have structures that look like feathers, so they look more like clubs, umbrellas, or pinwheels. Number 7. Fangtooth even though their teeth look like fangs and they look scary, fangtooths are actually quite small and harmless to humans. The common fangtooth, which is the larger of the two species, grows to a maximum length of just 16 centimeters. The head is small and has a big jaw. It looks old because it is full of mucus cavities with sharp edges that are surrounded by a thin skin. These eyes are small and set high on the head. The whole head is dark brown to black and has a strong side-to-side -side compression, a deep front, and gets thinner as it gets closer to the tail. The fins are small and simple, and they don't have any spines. The scales are formed into the skin and look like thin plates. As a way to make up for having fewer eyes, the lateral line is strong and looks like an open groove along the sides. Their teeth are so big compared to their bodies that they can't close their mouths. The juveniles look very different from the adults. Unlike adults, they have long spines on the head and periperculum bigger eyes, a working gas bladder, long and thin gill rakers, much smaller and flatter teeth, and a light gray color. Number 6. Pink See-Through Fantasia 
The pink see-through Fantasia is a type of sea cucumber found in 2007. It is a strange animal. It's a type of free-swimming sea cucumber that has never been seen before. You can see its mouth, nose, and intestines from the outside. This species can give off light just like other living things that can do so. When it's in danger, it uses this light to scare away any possible predators. The pink see-through Fantasia is a swimming sea cucumber that lives about 2,500 meters deep in the western Pacific Ocean's Celebes Sea. You can see how quickly he's moving. We're not going to be able to follow him much longer. They swim with the help of webs that look like fingers. Also, the sea cucumber, which was found on the Celeb Sea in Indonesia, lived up to its name. This is a remote part of the Western Pacific Ocean. It's surrounded by the Philippines, Mindanao Island, and the Sulu Archipelago, the Sangi Islands, Indonesia Sulawesi, and its own island, Sulawesi. This pink creature got its name from the fact that its skin is completely clear. Its intestines, mouth, and anus can all be seen from the outside. Number 5. The Sarcastic Fringe Head The Sarcastic Fringe Head is a small but interesting fish that lives in the Northeast Pacific Ocean off the coasts of California and Baja California. Males of this species are known for the amazing displays they put on when they flight over their territories. The Sarcastic Fringe Head is a tube blenny, which gets its name from the fact that it lives in burrows or other structures made by other animals that look like tubes. For this species, the shelters are made by clams that dig into the ground or empty snail shells. People have even been seen living in soda bottles and other things made by humans. Like all tube blennies, sarcastic female fringe heads can lay their eggs in the shelter of a male. The males then protect the eggs from predators and other threats until they hatch. This sexual selection by females drives a system in which males are very territorial and compete with each other very hard. Men with a sarcastic streak show off to each other by opening their very big mouths at their rivals. Number 4. The Gossamer Worm The Gossamer Worm is a type of marine planktonic polychaete. Its name, Tomopteris, comes from the Greek words for a cut and a wing, but it is also sometimes taken to mean fin. All of the species that have been described are known to be holoplanktic, which means that they only live in the water column. E. Newton Harvey had noticed that the parapodia gave off a strange yellow light. Only a small number of marine animals are known to glow yellow. It is known that many types of plankton have this bioluminescence trait. We don't really know how this process works, but we do know that none of the known luciferins are used. Some species are known to release bioluminescent particles from their parapodia when they are bothered, but this may be true of all species of Tomoteris. People think that this mode is used to confuse predators, like when military Military planes drop chaff or flares when trying to get away. Usually, gossamer worms don't get much larger than a few centimeters or 20 millimeters to 40 millimeters in total length. However, this may be just the size of the ones that can be caught in trawl nests. Number 3 Snailfish. The Liparidae are a family of Scorpanidorm fishes that live in the ocean. They are often called snailfish or sea snails. The snailfish family has a wide range from the Arctic Ocean to the Antarctic Ocean and the oceans in between. It has more than 30 genera and about 410 described species, but there are also many more species that haven't been named yet. There are different kinds of snailfish that live in water as shallow as the surface and as deep as more than 8,000 meters. The snailfish family has not been studied much, so not much is known about it. The shape of their long, tadpole-like bodies is similar to that of rat tails. Their heads are big for their bodies, and their eyes are small. Their bodies are thin to deep and their tails are very small. The anal and dorsal fins are long and may join or almost join the tailless fin. Snailfish don't have scales and have thin, loose skin made of gelatin. Some species like Ancantheroliparis opericlaris also have sharp spines. Their teeth are small, simple, and have sharp edges. The deep sea species have large, well-developed sensory pores on their heads. These pores are part of the lateral line system of the animal. Number two. Leafy Sea Dragon The leafy sea dragon is a charismatic species that lives in Australia's southern coast. Even though these fish look like seahorses, they are more closely related to pipefish and may be in between these two groups of fish. Leafy sea dragons are called that because they look like plants and blend in well with the algae that grow in the seagrass beds and rocky reefs where they live. Leafy sea dragons can't swim very well, so they hide themselves to avoid being eaten. They are bigger than other species that are closely related to them. He's blowing flags. 
I guess. Just take it to another level. They can grow up to one foot, 30 centimeters long. Leafy sea dragons eat small crustaceans that live in plankton, but they are small enough and have good enough eyesight to see and attack individual prey, unlike large filter feeders. Their heads are pretty big compared to how small their mouths are, so they can put enough pressure on their mouths to easily grab their prey. Leafy sea dragons don't get any more care after they hatch, and about two years they can have sexual relations. The leafy sea dragon is a popular fish in public aquariums, and is very hard to buy or sell. Leafy sea dragons can also be collected by a small number of people who have a license to do so. Number 1. Clown Frogfish Clown frogfish, also called clown frogfish, can get as tall as 15 centimeters, 5.9 inches. Like the other members of her family, the clown frogfish has a visible, stretchable body, and its skin is covered with small dermal spines. The clown frogfish has a lot of small bumps on its skin that look like warts. It can eat its prey size because of its huge, sloping face. Its color changes a lot because it changes to match where it lives. Clown frogfish can change their colors and patterns of pigmentation in just a few weeks. When coral bleaching happens, they can blend in with their surroundings and even turn white. But the main color changes from white to black, with smaller amounts of colors like cream, pink, yellow, red, and brown, which are often have dark, round spots and or saddles. Some heavily stained specimens are easy to mix up with their closest picture of Antenoros. In other words, this jellyfish's beauty is usually hidden by the fact that it swims around in the deep ocean in total darkness. We can only see how beautiful it is because light lights it up and there are cameras underwater. The deep sea is the best place to go when looking for strange creatures that defy understanding. Every year, researchers catch fantastic images of unusual new species and alien-looking critters lurking in the depths, and there are more yet to be discovered. Are more yet to be